myself short. <laughs> All right, let's see if the Muslim's going to get short, though. It's two on the board. Marine Lord already on match point in the final September weekly. Dimu, definitely no stranger to the HRE. I'd say it's one of his strongest sieves right now. Let's see what he's got in mind here. Actually, you know what he's probably planning? Cast Lady Rush. Cast Lady <laughs> Rush into Night Spam. Call it now. Makes a lot of sense if you think about that. HRE should be able to beat the Chinese to Castle Age. And then this map is actually pretty difficult to defend. You do have that big wood wall in the middle, but you could even flirt with the idea of trying to chop through, especially if you have a couple of knights backing you up and your opponent is not prepared for that. And then you have direct way into the opponent's base, or you can just run around. And once the first couple of knights arrive from the flanks, it's going to be insanely difficult for either of these players to defend the flanks. It's next to impossible to wall that much at the beginning of the game. Yeah, I think the big issue here is like the HRE player should want castle and the Chinese player uh, is reluctant to give it, but it's, it's difficult to all in before that, right? Like if you go to get near, you know, do you get enough of them before the knights come out? Your alternative is you go for your TC boom and you kind of get to have your cake, but the reality is the HRE gets their cake so much quicker. And once they get there, they're going to get access to the relics because you forgoed all aggression in favor of eco. So I think Marino's challenge here is kind of finding a nice balance between early feudal force and tc boom speaking of relics we do have three rather close to one another on the left side so that could be a prime candidate to pick up if the muslim has the map control on the left side he's going to be guaranteed three hmm. could be cool to see some like early walls before 10 minutes coming out from marine lord just because that's usually the time by which the muslim should be up in castle the first night's coming out of course this all depends on whether the muslim goes for his castle rush or does some weird funky stuff like earlier today uh, where he attempted an all-in men at arms rush in feudal. Yeah, that didn't work really well against the Delhi. And no. I would be hesitant to say that it would work against the Chinese. In fact, it probably has worse chances against the Chinese than it did against the Delhi. Absolutely. Like the difference with the Delhi is they don't have guns. Whereas the <laughs> Chinese defenses have guns that hit you for 25 damage. So that means basically about 80% of the damage output is going through your armor as a men at arms at the early phase of the game. It's also the other factor, the Shukunu. Like, that is yes. probably uh, the best way in Feudal Age, excluding knights, to deal with the men in arms. Sure, because the reality is you can only reduce a, a Shukunu's damage to one per shot, and they shoot bursts of three. So, compare it to an arch in that situation, the Shukunu does three times the damage. Yeah, and that's pretty big. It's also pretty resource efficient in those fights, but. Let's see what the game plan is here for Marine Lord. For now, it is just one scout for both. Slowly claiming most of the sheep, and it's gonna be an eco focused approach over here with an interesting placement for the Imperial Academy. You get the impression that this is not even there to boost the drop off buildings, it's set up for later as he's going to place his production nearby and he's just going to harvest the gold from the production buildings. Mm. Well, I'm more intrigued in this from the Muslim. That is a sweet arc and drop. I love this idea. TC boom. I haven't seen it in a while from Dimu. I, I think I wanted to see it uh, in the Delhi game he had earlier when he was playing HRE versus Wham's Delhi and he didn't do it. This is this is much better. Like, this is really cool. He'll set up a TC here. He'll be able to race his way through the wood line. He'll be able to inflate quickly to castle. Um, and the cool thing is that you can afford to push out additional prelates for the gold gathering as well because you have multi TCs. Yeah, it's going to set him up well with Eco. Now, Marine Lord is going to spot this one. So he's fully aware that his opponent is going to be on stone. He's yet to start mining stone himself, so we'll have to see whether he goes for Song Dynasty first. Kind of seems like it, because he is still on gold. Yeah, and meanwhile, the Muslim has been slow on that gold, right? He's just neglecting it. I, I would actually love to see, like, a free TC HRE build. It sounds crazy to say that out loud, because they just don't do it. But I think this, this format, uh, with the layout of, of Woodwall, might be the map where you could get away with it. Especially if you think that Marine Lord is also going to go greedy. And 3TC with the HRE would be so beneficial because if you think about that, your biggest boost is going to be the Prelate boost. Now, in order to leverage that to greatest effect, you need more and more villagers. So if you can escalate your villager numbers rapidly, more rapidly than you can in the case of, let's say, a 2TC build, then you can harvest or leverage that extra bonus from the Prelate Getter rate even better. Yeah, I think you just go ham on the wood and you end up getting all you need for a farm transition in a safe area. 
also sets you up for a late game L's back as opposed to the pass to Schwabia because you'd be at free TC effective. And on a map like this, the Elspark is actually an intriguing choice if you think about that, especially if you have some vicious fighting in the middle. Having an Elspark with emergency repairs and even a Rally Garrison inside, good luck pushing yeah. that. Yeah, especially with this configuration, right? Because you can just breach straight to your opponent's base. So you can creep the influence forward and then use it for keeps right inside your opponent's base with E-repairs plus the reduced damage from the Elspark. There's a lot of cool uh, implications in this map for L's back specifically. And there's the Barbican. I like this choice, by the way. I mentioned the walls. This works as well. It'll prevent the prelates because they are quite squishy. Hand cannons should be able to kill them off. Yeah, Barbican being dropped on the northern side, though. This could deny three relics away from the opponent. At least two. Third one might be something you can yoink if you absorb the damage with a knight or something, but still. Pretty nice Barbican spot over there. This is going to slow down the Muslims' expansion towards those relics. M Lord. Now also prep him for his second TC, which will him a free TC effective. The Muslim is back on the stone, though, so it looks like he is going to mirror this, but he's going to be ahead. If you think about the timings on this, when things come online, and you can actually see it on the village account, the Muslim is already ahead by one. This will escalate further. Yeah. For the time being, it's just a one villager lead, and indeed he is going for a 3 TC play here. You can see his stone count still increasing. Now, Marine Lord, he's Ooh. about to drop his second TC just now. Look at the layout as well. Dimu goes for both corners, so he's leaving all the accessible room around the Arkin for farms, and he's also going to have efficient drop-offs due to the fact that TCs will be drop-off points as well. Yeah, it's also something that helps protect these areas, like both sides. What What is that TC? Uh, is that on a boar, or am I... If it's not on a boar, it's a questionable TC. There, there's, there's no boars on Woodwall, right? So... And the two relics, sure thing, are nearby, but dropping a TC just to be around those relics feels weird at the minimum. I mean, you have berries. It's not even deer here, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to do this, why not just drop the TC in the western corner on the deer? And then you create like a, a, a kind of little fortification line. Yeah, kind of curious coming out of Marine Lord. Um, I guess this gives him the ability to build a proxy base. So instead of trying to engage on the tree line directly, which would benefit uh, the Muslim, he wants to come from the flank. Yeah, that could make some sense. And that could also help denying the relics. So the town center by itself, it's not going to contribute that much to denying those relics. But if you use this as a staging ground, it's a different story. And you can tell that Marine Lord, he's using the small trees. He has no desire to touch the large wood patch. So he probably is thinking about an eco-focused approach at the beginning, then go for a costly timing here, using this position as the forward base. Yeah, that's one thing. Marine Lord wants castle fairly quick, and then he can drop a monastery there, or temple rather, and just pick up all the relics. He'll hoover them away. And if he takes those three away, it means that there's probably only one relic the Muslim can realistically access. Yeah. One way to tell that Marine Lord doesn't want to play a long game here is that he's chopping the small tree patches at the back. So he doesn't even want to touch the large wood patch in the middle. For now, he's going to be on these small little forests at the back. Those get depleted rather fast, but Chinese can extend this a tiny bit because they do drop off more resources thanks to the supervisability. Demi, in the meantime, still having the eco lead in this situation. And then on top of that, you have to consider it's not just a six villager lead or more than that, in fact. Uh, it's the fact that they are mostly buffed by 40%. So this will unlock the tech time is a lot quicker for Dumu, which should be his goal now. Even going in for the broad axe, so it looks like he's trying to race his way through these tree lines even faster. Yeah, I love this build here from the Muslim. And as you said, the key thing here is that because you have such a large amount of villagers, you can leverage your prelate bonus even better than in the case of a 2TC build. Honestly, it's starting to look like the Muslim can't afford to buy a city builder games, so he's just making AOE4 a city builder game. <laughs> like, it's so orderly the way he he's laid this out. It's exactly how I would have been when I was, like, eight years old. Like, I've got enough room for all these farms. <laughs> and then i got the TCs. It's like everyone comes out and works in all these big fields, and then when they go home at night, they sleep in the town centers. And then you realize you do have a pile of stone in a place where you want to place a farm at, and then yeah. you become sad. Yeah, you know, like, what he doesn't realize is he thought he chose SimC creative mode, uh, but he didn't. So Marine Lord is eventually going to be the giant 
T-Rex that comes out of uh, the lake. He's going to be Godzilla. I'm about to Actually, I'm thinking about something crazy here. Double Blacksmith. He wants to go for a timing push. KP, this is going to be a Burgrave build. Yep. And the Burgrave is vulnerable, or when you're doing the Burgrave, you're actually vulnerable because you don't have the eco to back it up. Not in this case. You have a good enough eco to just mass produce on the Burgrave, so you eliminate the biggest weakness of this landmark. Mm -hmm. What I love about his build is like he enabled himself by doing the arcing on the wood. He heavily leveraged the wood. We could see it for the TC, but, but because you go for free TCs, you need a lot more food. It's very obvious he's going to go for farms. Marine Lord should have had this read. I wonder if he knew about the Burgrave detail, though. I want to see how Marine Lord responds because as it stands right now, he's trying to rush castle himself. He has zero military units. You don't count that scout and you do not count those Imperial <laughs> officials. Yeah, he's trying to get some walls up, but those are only palisades. You're only allowed to make stone walls beyond castle age. So he needs to get the castle first for him to get the stone wall. He is going to have the palisades completed, buying himself some time, but you see the chop through is nearly complete. Ooh. He's got a gap to flood through, but of course needs to deal with the walls now. He's giving men at arms to open up, and Marine Lord needs to finish off getting the gold so he can make his own tech up. If he repairs these walls long enough, he can easily just nest these these down. But it's going to take time. He's definitely going to want to prep archie ranges for mass crossbow. Yeah, for the time being, he's going to go up with the clock tower, only building it with like six villagers or so. That's going to take quite a lot of time for him. Tries to go for a tower defense, but he only has stone for one cannon emplacement. This is worrisome for Marine Lord because even with the supervise, it's going to take quite an effort to get numerous units on the field. And he's going to get flooded here big time. Look at that. Burgrave non-stop working. And suddenly, you're going to be facing 20 men at arms in the blink of an eye. And suddenly, you're going to be pop cap, So, the Muslim needs to keep an eye out for that. Love this detail. Mackinac. What's the counter men at arms? It's going to be the crossbows. He knows what's yep. going to be coming next. So, he tries to prep himself with mangoes. That's also going to stop this repair crew in the next 30 seconds. So keep Such a good that. detail. This is a really well designed game plan here for the Muslim. And you, you really have the impression that this was designed from the beginning. So it the Burgrave is not just a reaction to the fact that Marine Lord denied the relics. This was the game plan from minute number one. He wanted to go for the straight TC into Burgrave build, and it's working wonders right now. Marine Lord is struggling with numbers, just now starting to pop out crossbows. Little does he know that he's about to face Manganos already. Needs to be supervising, needs those crossbows out as quick as possible. It's already 30 men at arms in the field. Now, if Marine Lord double supervises those archery rangers, he's at the Burgrave pace. Problem is, you're going to be beaten with a sword while you're supervising. Crossbows start to come out. Men at arms will begin the dive. Maganel's nowhere nearby for the moment, but you can see how fast these bad lads are. They target onto the Imperial official to stop him from pushing out crossbows quicker. And it feels like Marine Lord needs a lot more wood to increase his infrastructure right now. He also needs to increase his food. I, I think the thing that he needs is just time, but he doesn't have that. He's being overrun by the man in arms here. Gold miners being slain, and this might be just him typing GG at this point, because he's going to struggle to stop this. It's a tough one. The, the men at arms don't kill you off as quickly, and actually, he's kind of kiting perfectly. He boxes them in so the crossbows can clean up. Villagers are the expendable force right now, but this does mean the Muslim is going to extend his villager lead further. And remember, you know, even if they were neck and neck, the Muslim is still further ahead due to the gathering rates from the HRE. Yeah, that's the concern here. Marine Lord might be able to survive this, but what is going to be the damage that he takes while doing so? Numerous villagers now falling, and if that Mangano was here, this would be a different story even. We do have to remember, though, that the Muslim has sacrificed a lot of scalability with this build. He's not going to have the perma gold trickle that you would with a Regnet's build. And they kind of knew this going into it, which means that Marine Lord, if he does weigh the storm here, holds on, he could end up with 400 passive gold into the late game. It's possible, but first he needs to collect the relics for that, and he's nowhere close to doing so. And he has already taken a big beating on his eco down to 75 villagers. His crossbows held strong, this Mangano lagging behind, still not on the battlefield, is probably what's causing so much headache for the Muslim. Is somewhat stabilizing now. Love the switch up. The Muslim going into the Lang's neck. Needs to be careful he doesn't get revealed too early. Right now, Marine Lord is a one punch man with just the crossbows, but should be looking to save up for a Springle next, considering he knows about the mango. The issue is access to wood. Yeah, that's the concern over here for him right now. Lansknecht, once they appear on the battlefield, the crossbows will struggle big time to deal with them. Mangano is now creeping up, though. You gotta be careful here. 
Yeah, he's going to give respect over. He can't directly engage with it. I think Marine Lord has two choices. Either play scarce wood sources on the south side, get the counters, or go for a keep drop. Keep drop just feels dangerous when you know Langsnet could be being added now. Yeah, but he is... He is going to face a keep drop, actually. The Muslim is the one mining stone. And the path is clear. The position is clear. And I don't think Marine Lord has what it takes to stop that keep drop. So you know, things are clear. He wants to clear up the deer. Langstack moving in. That's why Marine Lord's going to target them down. No cleave damage allowed. But Mango still not directly addressed. Finally, this room does come out. Monastery also being dropped now by Marine Lord. He looks to get the gold trickle. Weird choice considering actually the one thing he has too much of is gold. He pulls away the crossbows to the left side. Look at that. Crossbows even losing track of the army. But the bigger thing is that the crossbows are missing from the front line right now. Nothing to stop that keep with KP. He's going to rush it up. It's not quite Chinese build speeds, but it's still going to be damn good. Nothing you can really do to stop it either. Instead, he's just stuck turtling. Is it and look at Lumberjacks the in the bees, south. But... It's actually worse Dang. than that. Oh, yeah, he's going to get a nasty surprise here. I mean, they move so fast as well. It's difficult for you to react with just crossbows. Pretty lethargic in comparison. Villagers at least can shuffle away quickly due to the formation shuffle and wheelbarrow. So, won't kill many villagers, but the idol is important here because Marine Lord needs all the wood he can get. Oh, villagers, they have to be careful. Some Lunsnack that makes in. A couple of swings with those swords and they will all die. Oh, nice. Yes, Wallet from the rest of bees. So good against Lagsnack. This is the problem right now that Tumism faces. He was on the clock because this counter was coming out. He needs Springles of his own now, or he's going to be in trouble. Yeah, indeed, his momentum is shrinking, and somehow Marine Lord is holding this one. There's a keep in his face, but he at least has these proxy Ecos, and that's going to help quite a lot, because it's difficult for the Muslim to do long-lasting damage now. He has started by killing quite a lot of villagers at the beginning, but for the last two or three minutes, he failed to do significant damage to Marine Lord's Eco. Some idle time was forced, sure enough, but... He wasn't really able to just finish up Marine Lord, and as you said, he might need to soon because Marine Lord now is ready to escalate. Yeah, this is actually the genius of what Marine Lord done. He played wide so that Dumuzlum could kill him. Dumu was going for a static army that could not move, and that's why this worked out so well. We questioned the TC, but that was the beautiful logic behind it. He made sure that he couldn't be killed from one strike down the center. Brilliant read. And now the Muslim has to kind of innovate. He needs to take that next step because he's at risk of being pushed out. Yeah, he's going to drop a town center here. So he unlocks emergency repairs for that keep. Still some harassment is being done by those men in arms. And this is still a pain for Marine Lord to deal with. But his position is stronger than it was a couple of minutes ago. So there is definitely some hope here for Marine Lord for recovery. Mm -hmm. The arms are at least buying time as more keeps are being set up. But remember, trebuchets are in place for Marine Lord. So slowly making his way through the infrastructure and the Muslim never built housing out the front line. Instead, he chose to build a TC here. But remember, E-repairs did get nerfed. Once you're up to three trebuchets, you can outdo the repair rate that it actually gives you. Yeah, I love the defensive keep here as well. This is going to solidify control for Marine Lord. Also dropping a couple of palisades on the left side, just trying to make sure that he limits the surface that the Muslim can attack. I love the power scout is being pushed on flanks. Like the Muslim doesn't have a composition that responds to flank attacks right now. It's static and it's all in the center. In fact, if you look, the Muslim is incredibly one dimensional. 26 men at arms. That's it. Just a, a mango and a trebuchet, and one prelate. And his momentum is shrinking in the middle. And the problem that he's facing is that, as you said, he can't take direct engagement with the men at arms against that many crossbows. He's losing the keep here. And this map is designed to take direct engagements in the middle, mostly. So, in a straight-up fight, which he can't win, yes, Marine Lord will be more than happy to take. Yes, the bees. Mistakes made by the Muslim. He gets baited in. Marine Lord plays him like a fiddle. And the arm's taking a bad trade. Keep goes down. Sure, you got the primary TC, but it doesn't matter to Marine Lord. He's going to get an opening at this rate. And the concern is with the Nesta bees and the crossbow count escalating, these men at arms are not going to allow the Muslim to hold. And keep in mind that the Muslim also has a lot of value close to that central wood line. He does have two town centers in the Arkham Chapel, plus the heart of his farming eco. So if Marine Lord gains momentum over here, he could do tremendous damage to the Muslim's base in a very short time. That TC isn't going to last long either. The trap's behind this. I mean, it just feels like the Muslim, they, this is the type of strategy you can see working against the Abbasids to a certain extent. But against the Chinese, they just have so many landmarks that they can build. Feels like you're putting yourself at the clock against the sieve that is hardest to be on the clock against.
for this strategy. Oh, the Muslim was so close to breaking Marine Lord, but as he said, the expansion to the sides bought enough time for Marine Lord, and he's holding on to this one in a game where it is the HRE that have to rush things. Chinese are more than happy to drag this game out for five hours. It is the HRE that have to push this, finally committing to this fight here, but this is going to be subpar at best for the Muslim. And it feels like you're wasting so much effort on killing this trebuchet, and it's just going to lose you the men at arms. It, it doesn't feel good because the trebuchet isn't a problem anymore. It's already done what it needs to. It's killed your keep. It's killed your TC. You just threw away like 10 plus men at arms to kill a trebuchet. It does yeah. nothing. The Muslim wants Imperial here. He's sacrificing his army to buy himself time for Imperial, likely dropping the Alspach Palace somewhere close to that wood line. But he's he's actually yet to start building that landmark. And if you look at Marine Lord, now he's up 47 army against just eight. There is the Alsbach Palace. If Marine Lord spots this and stops this, this is game. It has to be fast though. And I think these outposts might bite the Muslim enough time. My concern, however, is what happens after you imp up here. You can see he's got 148 eco, great, but zero military. And he hasn't really thickened out the military production lines. It's more or less still just the elves back. In fact, it's actually worse than that. His entire military production was the single Burgrave Palace. So in order for him to yeah. pivot into any any other kind of unit, he needs a completely new line of production. Dozens of stables, possibly, in a game where he's lacking roots severely. In fairness, he did have the Siege Workshop as well. It's not fully discredited, but you are correct. It's more or less, it was just the Burgrave. He has laid in a bunch of stables now. We can count the crossbows can be there, but... I mean, this is kind of ideal for the Chinese. Shortest route to access, they blocked you off. If you mass horsemen, they just go palace guard. And it's actually going to be on the northern flank over here. Kind of equidistant to the flank and the center. So the idea here is that you can reinforce the right flank or you can push the middle at the same time with kind of even walking distance from your production buildings. The concern is that you're still pretty far away from the middle. So reinforcing that fight is actually going to be a challenge. Oh, man. I just realized this is a missed opportunity for the Muslim to make all of uh, HRE players as bold as him from holding. Um, because if he just picked the mine work instead of the Arkin, he would have picked the suboptimal <laughs> landmark at every stage in the game. <laughs> well, you could argue for the Burgrave being yes, better it, than... It's situational, but it can work. Yeah, yeah like, uh, and in, in the situation, let's be honest, it did some work. Part of the equation here was that the Manganol was lacking from that battle against Marine Lord. Like, Marine Lord was able to keep up those um, crossbows for quite a while. Yeah, sure thing. In the end, this game plan didn't work, but it's probably not the fault of the Burgrave Palace here. Sure, but, but my point is, like, you know, think about from HRE perspective. They want those things buffed. To Muslim, this is the closest he's looked to winning a game in this series so far. <laughs> yeah, he did. Uh, but he's, Except the mine work. Grim. Mine work's getting buffed, guys. It sucks. <laughs> Uh, Palace Guard is now raiding on the right side. There is a keep to hold them back, but still idle time for the Muslim. And the problem here is that by the time he really gets something out of Imperial Age, Marine Lord is going to be up there as well. And it's likely going to be through the gate wall or Great Wall Gatehouse in the middle. So not only is the Muslim going to be the one with some sort of fortification in the middle. My brain is working at 20%, which is dangerous anyway. Remind me, L's back. When it goes down, you lose the influence, right? Um, yes, you do. Yeah, so that's that. I actually think that's another reason why L's back is so unjustifiable. Is it's a keep, so you want it on the front line, but if it goes down, you lose the ability to get reduced yeah. damage. It it just it's it's so very bad. situational. It's really good yeah. to be a, the second keep behind an actual keep keep. Oh god! <laughs> the realization that the horsemen just don't work now. But yeah, it's like you know what it reminds me of. It's like here's a comparative for you. Spaskai Tower. If I build Spaskai Tower and Spaskai Tower goes down, it would be comparative to me now not being able to build Stone Wolves. It's dumb. It's just dumb. That being said, right now, it is the landmark under fire. You will be able to e-repair that for the time being, and it's going to be a challenge for two trebuchets to take it down. In fact, it's going to be easily insufficient. So, a couple of bombards might be needed here for Marine Lord, but emergency repairs already popped. Elspeth Palace still at full HP. Looks like we are going to have a flank around, but Stone Walls should come up in time here from Marine Lord. So, once again, the Muslim is just going to bump into walls here. But don't worry, Lytical. He's got cannons to take out those walls. Oh, wait, it's conference. <laughs> Might take a while. 
You could try. I, I'm pretty sure Colvin's going to attack walls. It's just... It's yeah, just they, they can. But they do, like, laughable amount of damage. Yeah, they'll be a wall. Marine Lord behind this, by the way, sitting on soon to be five relics, yoinking away every single relic, including the ones on the Muslim side, getting Tithe Barns as well. He's more than set up for late game, and this is where problems begin for the Muslim. HRE is great with their timings. They are great at rushing Imperial, but once there, their unit composition is somewhat lackluster compared to the juggernauts like Chinese. Yeah, it goes a little bit rest and sleep mode. Um, especially when you don't have the infinite gold on your side. And you're a sieve oh. that typically gets his best value out of gold. Wall is going to be blocked by the quick wall <laughs> from the Muslim in the way. So keep an opening into the Chinese base as the horsemen are looking to breach. Marine Lord will now have to pivot to react to that. He's moving in position with the crossbows and pass guard now. But it's problematic because the second wave behind it is dangerous. 38 horsemen in total for the Muslim. This is only level one. Yeah, and look at that. Another layer of policies just to make sure that the storm walls can't come up. This is a good raid here by the Muslim. Finally finds an angle. And Marine Lord doesn't really have an army to stop this with. Only at 12 spearmen he is. Oh, spearmen pals. Garb will try to hold in this area. It's going to be a flood through from the horseman. Willing to engage on top of the crossbows. It's going to be a big fat throw away. Marine Lord knows the crossbowmen are going down. But she needs to buy time to get the reactionary spears out. Horseman Gaunt actually increasing now for the Muslim. A second wave come behind this that will include Langsnack. Oh yeah, when the Langsnack arrived, that's where things get problematic for Marine Lord. He's up to 21 spearmen. He's actually rallying them to the front rather than to the side. So Horseman's still alive for the time being. And yeah, look at the infantry behind that. That's the scary part. Not even the Horseman, it's the Langsnack there. Mm -hmm. Because now the spears are your counter, right? Yep. Spears died to Langsnack very quickly. You'll watch how quickly they get evaporated. If there was a attacks on that is. And look at the flank around. Uh, Trebuchets will get taken down as well. He's going directly for the traps. Interesting choice here because uh, that means you're diving the nest of bees. Uh, so, uh, he's gonna save the so, traps. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, now, yeah, now you need to run. That's cannon placement as well. I think the Muslim just threw away his army for nothing. Oh yeah, that's cannon placement. Also nest of bees and placement on that wall. Keep in mind, Lunsknecht are fragile, so a couple of wall is out there and all those infantry units are gone. Why aren't the nest of bees attack? I think you need a specific angle to fire to. I don't think so you can fire to the side. It's kind of like... It's weird because you see the range on it. It's like, that seems busted. And then you realize it can only shoot in one direction. It kind of feels underwhelming for, a, for an Imperial Age landmark. <laughs> Oh, Badass Guard's now coming in from the left side. Finally, Horseman making an appearance in the farming eco of Marine Lord. Both sides will be taking casualties over here. The scary detail yeah. could be that the Muslim could be cut off from Wood soon because Marine Lord is intensifying the raids in the middle. Yeah, the Muslim has just brought in a second wave of Horsemen into the main base, but Ooh. my big concern is the Palace Guard will, will last longer. They'll be present for longer. Yeah. And you can see the other issue with the Muslim at home, at least, is these Lang's neck. As soon as new troops come out, they get cleaned up, which is why Marine Lord is now switching into hand cannons. This is worrisome for Marine Lord, actually. He's leaving all those farmers oh unaddressed, and look at that. What? <laughs> uh, M Lord? Yeah, he definitely didn't realize that's going to be a recovery point. The Muslim finally gets a point on the board. Marine Lord was not looking in the right place. Great move from Demu. And off the cuff type build for the HRE, but it pays dividends here in Woodwall. Great game by the Muslim. I loved his game plan. Creative, innovative, and it worked out in the end. He needed some, I'm not going to say mistakes from Marine Lord, but some delays, let's say. The stone was on the right side, were almost completed, and if they go up, it's a different story for the Muslim. But he was able to stop them in time, flood through the cavalry, and from that point on, Marine Lord struggled to answer.